Welcome to Delta Cast Tutorials. Today I'm going to be doing a owner gutter cast, boxer cast, if you will, to some. Positioning is going to be important, but let's talk about what we have for supplies. We have some stockinettes already pre-cut. We're going to supply those. One just for the forearm, one is for the thumb, and one is for the fingers that's going to be involved. Some people use a one inch or you can use a two inch for the uh, fingers, but I have two inch. And just some cast tape, which is the Delta Light Plus. I have a three inch and a two inch, and I'll also be using Orthoglass Solo to go ahead and involve a splint in there so it's a little bit quicker application for the patient and getting them in position. The position we're gonna get this patient in, because their injury is actually around the fourth and fifth metacarpal area. It is impacted or is angulated, but we're gonna concentrate on getting that wrist in 15 to 30 degrees of extension. And at the metacarpal phalangea joint, we're gonna get that at 45 to 90 degrees, depending on what the provider wants. Because we're gonna have these fingers put together for such a long time or smashed together for a little while, and that side of a cast, we wanna put some padding between the fingers. So let's go ahead and put some padding between the fingers. And padding here. Get that ready. Now the padding between the fingers is gonna help keep maceration of the fingers and also pad the bony promise between the fourth and fifth finger. Let's put some stocking it on. All right. All right, so now we have the stocking it on, but let's do a series of different cuts. We're gonna pull this aside here, make a little small cut there, and slide this up, and then slide it back down. Now let's put some padding between the fingers. You don't wanna have it too far where it's sticking out the tips of the fingers where you can't actually see the tips of the fingers for a blanched test or capillary refill. Now let's cut a hole for the thumb. And now let's put something on the thumb. Different ways you can apply your stocking it to the thumb. I'm doing a more simple way for right now and just make it a little slit. So this is the slit that's gonna be put for the thumb piece and then this slit will be facing toward the index finger. You can use a one inch or a two inch, it's your preference. Let's go ahead and put some stockinette on the fingers itself that's gonna be involved in the cast. Make a little slit there. that goes between the fingers. Have a little extra there, so just cut this off. Now, again, we're gonna get that position, establish that one more time, and then you start applying your padding. So I'm quickly trying to get up to the fingers area. So I want to go ahead and go between the fingers there. Get this nice and smooth. Some of the common problems people face when they're putting these casts on is they put them too deep in between the webbing of the fingers and it causes a lot of irritation. So we're going to really concentrate on that today. And what I'm doing is tearing this so that I can get between the fingers a little bit easier. Palpate on the tips of the fingers to know where your cast will terminate. On the proximal end, we're going to do that. It's going to be the same way, like a short arm cast, where we stop it where it's just one or two inches from the antecubital space, or it doesn't touch the biceps when they bend their arm 90 degrees. 
So I have the padding on. Now let's go ahead and cross it over on the back side of the hand here. Do that one more time. We want to have at least a minimum of two layers, a max of four. Now, I wouldn't turn this, you know, on a real patient, but I want you guys to see what I'm doing here. All right. So now let's go ahead and finish this little last part down here. And now this is a good stopping point for you to understand how I'm going to get this patient in position. One of the quick ways to do it is once I have the cast tape on, I'm going to grab the hand like I'm trying to arm wrestle the patient, put one portion of my hand on the back side of her wrist, and use this meaty portion in that little area where the wrist will be extended. So what happens is it keeps those wrinkles from forming so much. And I'll just get the patient back and then push the fingers down. Let's get this prepared here because we're going to roll this down. And that's how that's going to look. And let's put a little bit more padding on the proximal end there. You may have noticed that I did a little double cuff there. It's gonna help when I pull this, I'm gonna have a nice little padded edge. That's a preference that you can do there. And what I'm doing here is just palpating to see where is the tip of the fifth pinky finger. A little tree here, I'm going to add what we call a saw stop, and I'm going to put that directly on top of the padding. So when it's time to cut the cast off, I have a little protected there on the dorsal and volar side of the extremity, so it can be a little bit more comfortable as I remove the cast. So I folded a little edge there, and now all I'm going to do is just place this midline, and of course, when it's time to cut the cast off, you ensure that you stay in the middle portion of the width of this so you can cut it off a little bit easier for the patient. All right, so now what I'm going to do is just add a little splint to it. So what we're going to do is jump ahead so we don't have to worry about the fingers just too much. So all I'm going to do is go through twice with the cast up circumferentially because I'm going to use a splint there. So as you can see, I squeeze that. That's where the patient's pinky finger is or fifth finger. So I want to put that just a little bit below that. And then I'm going to have this angled like this and I'll secure it with some tape if you want to. And I can finish this cast a little bit faster now. Saw so stop just to make sure the cast uh, removal is a lot faster and easier. Add a little splint there, and I'm going to make this kind of wet so that it's going to activate this a lot more properly. And put that on, and now we have a strong finger cast portion of it so that it doesn't wobble. Because some of the complaints that I hear from other clinicians that they have a weak finger cast portion of it. It's just wobbly and that's not good, especially if for athletes who have injured their hand. So let's go ahead and wet this.
And let's bring your elbow up here. There we go. Now notice where I'm doing my cuts. I'm lining it up with the long finger. And I'm gonna do a little, not a twist, but make sure that the edges are not bothering the patient by flipping it over just a little bit. Try your best not to go too far down in that little web space that causes a lot of range of motion issues and problems, irritation to the patient. And you can see here again, I'm doing that little flip down so the little sharp edges of the fiberglass doesn't hang out too much. And then do it again. So now what I'm gonna do is put the patient's arm in neutral position. And now what I'm gonna do is just put my hand on the back of their wrist as such, just like that. And then I'll just get them back doing my angulation that I need. And then bend the fingers down. Now what I just did, because I put that splint on and all I wrapped it around was two layers, the splint is interlocking performance, so it's pretty strong. So now I have more than six to seven layers around the fingers and I don't have to go around the fingers as much to finish the cast. Now focus on my inner osseous mode. So I'm gonna hold your arm up just like this for a second. Now let's do a mold, have the patient in a neutral position. Contour that and make a flattened appearance on the dorsal and volar side. Now, once I'm done with that, I want to put a little bit of pressure around the distal palmar crease area so I can make a nice contoured cast. This is all I'm doing is putting a flattened appearance over here. Remember, it's just a splint on the top and the bottom. And this area here just has two layers, so it doesn't need to be super, super strong there, but I have it flattened there. You could put more layers around if you want to. And so what that does is allows for better range of motion of the fingers. All I'm gonna do is put more cast tape here, and I don't have to go on the fingers at all because I took care of putting enough cast tape on the fingers already. Let's go ahead and open up another cast layer roll. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and wet this roll, finish off the cast. And just as I do this, another good reason with the splint is sometimes you have hand surgeons who may want your cast a little bit shorter stopping at the proximal interphalangia joint. Well, that's kind of hard to do and wrap that. If you have a splint there, you can just stop it there and you have that strength there where you need it. Now let's finish this up, make it try to look as neat as we can. And again, I'm gonna do what we did on the short arm cast is a little J cut. So I did that little cut there, kind of round it shorten these little fiberglass edges out, wrap that around, do the same thing in that web space as it kind of flipped back up there. So what I just did is a short arm owner gutter boxer cast. This side of the owner side is incredibly strong because I added that splint. 
This was the Owner Gutter Boxer Cast. Hopefully this technique can help you and add to your little repertoire of putting on these more difficult advanced casts. If you need any additional support or training regarding Delta Cast products, contact your local rep or look for us on www.sd.com.